What is happening, YouTube? Um, so, a basketball video for today because previously I, I I made a football video about my Chargers. This video it's gonna be about the Grizzlies versus the Boston Celtics. Um, since back in June when my favorite player of the draft, Gregory Jackson, the second, he fell down to the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, I was pretty bummed out that the Clippers passed up on him. So I decided to also like kind of like have a, like a dual allegiance type thing and then like support the Grizzlies because that's Gigi Jackson is one of my favorite players. Clippers will always be like my true, true team. But the Grizzlies, I wouldn't even say it's like my second team. I would say that's my other team because sometimes you have a favorite player, man. Like, oh man, I don't know what else. I don't know how to like properly phrase it. And and if if I were to pick any other team other than the Clippers, Grizzlies were one of the teams, and I was glad a team like the Memphis Grizzlies got a guy like G like Gigi Jackson. Now, unfortunately, he did not play today. Um, I watched his game because I heard a news that he he's uh, like active, but he's not he didn't play any minutes, which I wouldn't say it was disappointing because. The Grizzlies, they played pretty good basketball, so I cannot complain. Either way, um, the Grizzlies, they're in, a, they're in a huge storm right now. But the Grizzly teams, man, when everybody's healthy and when everything's all rejuvenated, I think they're going to be a, a really good team. And they're going to be scary to go up against, especially their defense, because they play extremely hard. And there are moments when, they, yeah, they got blown out, I believe. But, but nevertheless, the Grizzlies, they put up a huge fight against the Boston Celtics. And the Celtics, they're a pretty good team. Celtics, they got Porzingis, they got Tatum, they got Holiday, they got Jalen Brown. It's a pretty stacked squad. But the Grizzlies, they put up the fight. And, man, couldn't be a shout-out to them. Jaron Jackson Jr., eight rebounds, one block, one steal, uh, 17 points. That man plays hard, and I heard a lot of people would never give him so much flack due to his bad summer league performance, but Jaron, from what I've seen from this game, he puts an effort on defense. It's like, when it looks like he, you blew you blew by him, he always managed to find a way, and they go for a block, and he doesn't let you uh, score on him that easily. Yeah, you, you might get like a, like a hook shot on him, but when it looks like you're going to get a like a wide open layup, Jaron, he plays hard. He plays extremely hard and he goes for the block. Um, Santi Aldama, I mean Santi Aldama. Um, I've heard, I've been aware of him. Um, I've been neutral about him. I didn't have any opinions on him till this game, and this game, it kind of maybe grew on him. Um, Aldama, he 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 had a, an amazing game uh, versus the Celtics for this one. He had he made six threes, which is impressive. So from what I've seen, he doesn't seem to be like a true big man. He seemed more like a a type of big that would like to space the floor, um, kind of like a oh a like a Walmart version of Laurie Marketing because Laurie Marketing he's a beast. So you don't want to say he's like he's literally like a Laurie Marketing, but I'd say like a really Walmart version of Laurie Marketing or occasionally how Jonas Valanciunas plays, but the thing was, is Jonas, he, he posts up. Or you can also say Aldama's kind of like a a developed version of uh, what Dragon Bender was supposed to be. But basically, he's one of the one of like the three-point shooting bigs, at least from what I've seen in this game. But nevertheless, he was pretty good in this game. 28 points, 12 rebounds. Uh, six assists, two steals. He was playing pretty hard. Um, sometimes he gets a little too fancy at times. And then, you know, sometimes, like, when I first saw him play, I was like, nah, like, why are you trying to shoot threes all the time? But then, apparently, looks like him shooting threes, that's just his game. And he's, he's just, like, more of a modern big. Um, and then, Bismack Biyombo. Uh, Bismack Biyombo, um, he was solid. Um, you know, stat sheet doesn't look too too good, although he does foul a lot. But he plays pretty hard on defense. 
Rebound is not as good. Only two rebounds. Um, you know, he only scored two points, but he's more of like a defensive guy. And I think Bismack Biombo was like a huge underrated uh, steal for a team like the Memphis Grizzlies, especially since the Grizzlies like defense is like their identity. Um, he he had like way better games previously. Like he would get like double double, I believe, and he got multiple blocks. This game I didn't see like a complete highlight of. I mean, I didn't see like a elite game of Bismack Biombo, but I still kind of like notice moments when. He looks like a solid player. Only thing is, he needs to try to work on, you know, trying to not foul too much. Even Jaren, he has that problem too. But Jaren, he seems to like, looks like he did better in this game. Uh, Conchar, um, you know, Conchar, he also plays pretty hard too. Plays hard on defense, gets rebounds, hustles. Offense doesn't do much, but he would hustle. He would get rebounds. Um, three assists, not too bad. Um, he plays pretty he, he puts in the effort. Like, I'll definitely tell you that. Desmond Bain. Huge shout-out to him. That man was a bucket. Oh, man. He was making buckets in so many ways. Well, not really so many ways, I should say. He was splashing threes. Um, if I could give this man, like, a comparison, if I were to describe his game to, like, a more old-school fan who never seen the Grizzlies... He's he kind of is like a Milwaukee Bucks Ray Allen because sometimes I'll be you know watching highlights of older players and Milwaukee Bucks Ray Allen of course Ray Allen he's known for shooting threes but when Allen was with the Bucks he likes to drive to the rack and Desmond Bain he could drive to the rack at times but Bain he's more of a three point shooter he's really strong really burly um and Bain this this Loki could be this is definitely like his breakout year that will be swept under the rug because the Grizzlies are not like doing as good. I can see him kind of have like a Bradley Beal type trajectory like about like two years ago when he was averaging 35 points a game. Because Bain, he looking pretty solid, man. Eight assists too. So like without a lot of people, without Rose, without Jaw, like he's essentially running the point guard on the bench. Zaire Williams, Zaire Williams, he got, he got some key rebounds, and he got four assists, but this game was definitely his off game, um, I, I think Zaire is a pretty solid player, I've seen him played, um, more often at times, even, like, like, the past years, um, he showed flashes of being a solid player, um, he kind of, like, he puts effort on defense by the same time, he gets scored on defense, like, more than he should, and one huge weakness is just about his frame, because some skinny players, like, they might be actually strong, but it, with Zaire, like, sometimes, like, at, at moments, when he would, when there would be, like, a screen, um, the person would just get wide open, and then it would result to a three. Overall, Zaire's offense was just not good whatsoever, but he, all, he does bring his all in terms of his rebounding, and his assists. Uh, Kenny Lofton Jr. was nice to see him play some minutes. Um, you know, two for five, not too bad. Two rebounds and all that. Um, you know, he had like a key play. Oh, I I think he definitely could be like a really good role player within the future. Um, kind of, I started uh, learning more about him back in the 2022 NBA draft when he did pretty good in the combine and then he got selected to the Grizzlies and then he had some really good G League games um his game definitely reminds uh people of like a, a Zach Randolph prototype he's like he's not like a center but he's kind of like a big burly power forward um pretty solid player David Roddy he had a way more of a quieter game uh, in this game. 0 for 2. Um, he, he missed, like, all the threes. Um, two rebounds. Um, wasn't as good as, like, other games because Roddy, um, he had moments when he had some solid games, but this game was just a no-show, unfortunately. But he's another pretty solid player. Um, 
also like like really big big strong frame so at times like his defense could definitely like put a put up a fight but other than that like um his speed is not like the best but pretty strong dude so at times like it's hard to really back him down and then Gilliard, um you who who was like running the point guard um you know one for two um five assists two steals not bad um you know he did a, he did his role Vince Williams Jr. He stood out in my opinion. Um, I I really liked from what I've seen from his defense, and he he hit really key threes, um, two for threes, two for three, and two blocks. Um, was pretty impressed with his game. Um, like if anything, this game definitely kind of caught my attention of other players, caught my attention on Aldama. Um, even kind of like got me paid a little more attention of, of what Conchar can do. And uh, and Vince Williams, like, I really, like, started paying more attention to uh, Vince Williams from now on because he brings it his all on defense, and he could hit pretty key. He could hit threes, so solid player. But, but man, they put up a huge fight against the Celtics, and, of course, I'm really bummed out that Gigi Jackson didn't play today. I'm really convinced if Gigi Jackson played today, Grizzlies would have won a game. But he, but the thing is, the, his team, his G League team, had a game today and Gigi Jackson played. So, so it's understandable why the coach didn't decide to play him because, you know, playing back to backs is already like stressful enough. But if you play like during the same same day, like you play the game on the afternoons, and then you play during at night, yeah, he, he there's a huge chance that could definitely fatigue a player, so I kind of understood his decisions of not playing him, but still would have been nice if I got to see like 10 minutes of him, or 15 minutes, because look out for him, just look out for him, the next two years, three years, you guys will see what I'm talking about, about Gigi Jackson, because that guy's killing it. But anyways, let's talk about the Boston Celtics. Jason Tatum, he played like how he usually does. Um, 20 points, so it was, it was a lower scoring night. But he got a lot of rebounds. Like, almost like a double-double. And five assists, one steals. But he got a lot of turnovers too, so, you know. Um, so it was kind of like his off game. Uh, Chris Sapp, Porzingis, he was a bucket. Uh, 26 points, 8 rebounds, 6 blocks. Um, especially if you play against a team like the Memphis Grizzlies, um, it's more favorable for a big man like Chris Stepps, Porzingis. Um, that was a good acquisition for the Boston Celtics. Um, Celtics made a lot of good moves this season. Uh, Drew Holiday, 2 for 7, um, 7 points. Four assists, six rebounds. Uh, more quieter on the offensive end, but but he does he does get his rebounds and he gets his assists and all that. Um, Derek White, ten points, uh, four assists, uh, three rebounds, solid performance. Jalen Brown had a quieter game, um, one one for seven, five for six, five, five for sixteen. Six rebounds, three assists, uh, pretty solid defensive performance, but quiet scoring night. Um, Sam Hauser, he hit a lot of clutch threes. Um, he was definitely one of the players that helped the, the Boston Celtics a lot. Uh, four rebounds, two steals, and he was hitting his shots. Al Horford as well, too. He, he hit some threes that kind of set some momentum. Um, three rebounds, two assists, and... You know, five points. And then Peyton Pritchard. Uh, Pritchard um, you know, he did okay. Seven points, three boards, and then one assist. And then uh, other than that, um, he played a little bit of a Lamar Stevens and uh, Keita as well too, which was a pretty interesting decision, which is, you know, it's cool to get, get some players to play, like some of the minutes and all that, even though it's not much. Could definitely swing some momentum, uh, but 
Nevertheless, the Boston Celtics um, managed to get the win. But the Grizzlies, they played pretty hard. And I think next season, it's going to be a completely different team. And not talking about like roster moves and all that, but I mean how the team performs. Because, you know, the Grizzlies, of course, Jail got suspended, so of course it's a huge blow. But I think it's a pretty good blessing in disguise, if anything, because um, the Grizzlies, they're going to get a high pick. And then, and of course, if they draft well, it could definitely set them over the hump. And the Grizzlies, ooh, next season. Next season, it's either going to be 2025 or 2026. I could definitely see the Memphis Grizzlies going to the finals because they're a young team. They have the chemistry, and once the chemistry just grows and when you're a young team, and then especially if you kind of like have the Dallas Maverick type trajectory, like you get a high pick, but you're still a contending team, that's a recipe for success. And then not to mention that you got a draft steal in Gregory Jackson Jr. That's only going to be a like a like a really stacked team. And you got Marcus Smart. Their defense is crazy, crazy. So it's hard to go up against them um, once everybody's healthy. And I got nothing but, you know, like a positive outlook for the Grizzlies in the future. But anyways, I should definitely tune in. I mean, that should definitely uh, end this video for sure. Um, You know, this year, I'm kind of like trying to spread the wings more. Because previously, I just only focused about the Clippers and all that. Of course, I make a little bit about, you know, the news and all that. But... This game, I mean, this year, um, I've been following other sports. And then, of course, you know, since what happened back in June, I kind of, like, found, like, another team. So, this, I'm kind of, like, spreading my wings this year. But that should, t- that should definitely end this video. Thank you all really much for tuning in. And have a great night or have a great day when you're watching this. And peace.